Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Zoo Flipper, where we step in when things start getting a little too wild. And in today's episode, we are tackling the question of, what is Animal 101? The guests of Zudesia Zoo were recently polled to see how their education abilities are doing and to see what they think of the many animals that Zudesia currently sports. In a simple test, we presented the various animals to the guest and asked them to tell us what it was. The answers were dismal and rather disappointing. Behold, what is apparently the black and white teddy bear. And this, which the guest reported to be a long-necked chicken with weird legs. And finally, the round lizard with adorable boopable nose. Yes, it's clear that unfortunately the guests who have come to Zudesia Zoo simply don't have the animal education and the smarts that they should after wandering through its path for so long. And so today, my friends, we are beginning the lessons of What is Animal 101? Today's episode of Zoo Flipper is brought to you by Zookeeper, taking Minecraft zoos to level 1.12. It's a whole new world, and your mission is to build the best zoo possible. Just pop in the mod pack and begin your adventure. <sighs> Alright guys, so we are back with another Zoo Flipper episode, and today we are going to be focusing on guest education and donations. A very important founding principle of keeping our zoo flourishing and making it so that when the guests come, they are getting everything we really want them out of their experience here at our zoo. Which is hopefully going to be having a really great time, but most importantly, learning more about the wonders of the natural world. And let's go ahead and pause. Huzzah! We finally get a chance to catch up on this and it's about time because I was so embarrassed when I actually took a peek at what we actually have for guest education. Look at this! Look at this! This is tragic! We've got like two things that basically will teach our guests and it's no wonder they're not donating more because education is very intimately tied with how much your guest will donate to your zoos. So we have all these donation bins absolutely everywhere, but I don't even think we have a sign telling the guest what an okapi is. We don't even have a sign telling the guest what an okapi is. This is an okapi tragedy and we are going to be fixing it today. So, let's go ahead and actually review what we've got up and anything that's currently wrong with our exhibits. Because I can see a few places where we have an education board that we don't need out in the middle of nowhere. Why is it? What? Why? Why is there an education board in here? Who knows? I'm really glad I can see that and get us back a little bit of money. And then, let's see. There's also an education board over here. But it's not assigned to anything, even though we do have Japanese macaques in here. Possibly not for long, though. Just gonna be honest, you guys. It may not be for, like, the longest time, because I think one of our zoo flippers may be getting this whole contraption uh, down. We'll have to see if one of our patrons actually wants to sponsor rescuing the Japanese macaques and changing that whole, whole ordeal into something else. Uh, and then I saw there's another education board, like, right in here. <laughs> That's for the exhibits. We don't even need that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much we've fixed in, like, two seconds already. All right, so let's carry on and see other locations where the education boards just aren't appropriate. Like, down here, the pangolins aren't actually over here. So, unfortunately, our guests aren't going to be getting anything from having this really nice-looking little uh little exhibit piece which is quite a pity if you ask me here i need to lower this down just a bit there we go and i think what we actually need to do now is go ahead and i'm gonna remove if i can reach the piece can i reach the pieces is it gonna let me exit okay no no i want to grab there we go. I'm going to go ahead and remove that habitat board, um, which is a bit of a pity because I really liked having it there. But let's see if we can get in an education facility for the guest that'll just do something more general and we'll pretend it's for our amazing pangolin. I'd be really interested in future... Uh, oops, that's actually for habitats. Huh, 
<laughs> we could leave the guest a blood scent marker. I'm sure that would give them quite the education. Uh, but actually, I would really love to see more ways to educate guests coming in future expansions or updates to Planet Zoo. Like maybe having an educator, because that's always, or volunteers, that's always a huge thing for zoos that I go to. I have been convinced to do more stuff at different zoos, and I have been more impressed by the volunteers who show up at zoos than I have for some of the keepers. Um, in fact, actually, the reason that Chips and I had such an amazing time in the San Diego Zoo is because we stopped to look at the elephants, and there was an older woman there who spends her days in retirement volunteering and learning more about the elephants and teaching people about the individual elephants who live at the San Diego safari park she was so nice and so sweet and she let us know about the important work that the san diego zoo and san diego san diego zoo global is doing with elephants and with their rescue missions that we actually got a chance to go and do some like behind the scenes tours that nobody ever requested because they didn't know about it because of the information she told us so I would love it if you could get your zoo's reputation up and you could make guests happy enough that maybe they can turn into volunteers and then they could go around and they could raise the happiness of guests and staff and they could raise the happiness or the education of uh, guests. And maybe they only have like one favorite animal. So if you get rid of say the pangolins, then the volunteer will leave. But I think that'd be really cool if you could attract specific volunteers to your various exhibits and they could just walk around and educate people about uh, that animal and bring their education up. Gosh, I should probably join the Planet Zoo forums and like submit some of these ideas because I think that'd be really fun. But let's actually see, maybe we can get two pieces in here now. Does that show up in the back? Oh, it doesn't, nice. So maybe we can actually get two education pieces where we had one. Oh, that's actually really cool looking. And then let's try ecotourism paired with deforestation. And if let's see if guests will actually use this now. Does that count as education that they'll stop and look at? Oh, it does! Look at that! Immediately we have people coming to learn more. That is so cool. I think we're going to actually use this entire setup because it looks really nice in more areas throughout the zoo because then we get like kind of two for the price of one sort of thing set up. And let's make sure that next to each of those spots we actually have a donation bin. Just in case. I don't think it'll hurt if they have their education go up and maybe think about donating over here. All right, so let's check other problem locations for our education areas. We're apparently empty on several exhibits. And as a result, those educational facilities aren't being used. So let's check this. This is an empty giant burrowing cockroach exhibit. Huh. So I think, um, I guess because this is such an important education day, we'll go ahead and we'll actually put some new exhibit animals in. Which normally we would only save that for like active episodes, but this is supposed to be an insect forest too, so huh. And I really don't want to delete the education things because they're really useful. <laughs> so let's see. We'll go ahead and add in. Ooh, a nice western diamondback. You know, there are snakes like the brown, eastern brown snake that I do believe eat insects. Let's check this out. Do we have, oh, we don't have uh, rodents, lizards, and amphibians. We should have a little cycle of life going on in Bug Village. Because although it would be fun to have a whole bunch of the, just, oh, the Brazilian salmon pink tarantulas do breed excellently. Hmm, that is tempting. But let's get some frogs. What's the highest rated frog that we can run across? Let's see, let's see. Oh, it looks like the giant snails actually. Oh, there's the goliath frogs. Okay, so there are some goliath frogs. Let's grab a couple goliath frogs really quickly. A couple nice ones. Oh, geez. <laughs> Apparently we have uh, more going on in here than I thought. But we're gonna put the goliath frogs in here. 
And then I think I'm gonna grab a couple Brazilian tarantulas and send them over here. There we go. And we'll get this set to Goliath Frog. And we'll worry about like prepping the Goliath Frog and taking care of it in a little bit. And let's grab Brazilian pink salmon tarantula. Because today we're just focusing on education. All right, so now we only have one empty exhibit. And this is supposed to be like a bug village, but I think guests will be happy with a little bit of variety. And we could say some of these creatures, like, oh, let's just get a really popular, mm, iguana? Because she'd be really popular at 2,493. Uh, there's a lesser Antillian iguana. Let's see, let's see. Critically endangered. Heck, that sounds amazing. I would love to learn more about them. Flowers, fruits, and greens. So she probably just lives in the garden. Let's get her. We're going to go ahead and put her right in here. We'll have to make sure she's in a proper work zone. There we go. And taken care of just really fast because we want to make sure that none of the animals will be in dire straits. Okay, staff, work zones, bug village, yep. They will be taken care of in Bug Village. That's excellent. All right, so now that we know we have all of the education things set up in Bug Village, good, good, good. Let's come back down and let's make sure that there's donation bins everywhere. And here we added these cool bin covers. So it looks like donation bin, donation bin, donation bin, donation bin, donation bin. Good, good, good. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think what we should use for this wall is we should actually put in some more of the education spots. And I can the education speakers talk about the animals? <gasps> Ooh, if that's the case, that'll be fantastic because we should have, whoops, I do not want to add to Fancy Fox's house. Oh, I forgot how we named all of these after different people's houses. Tiger Village House. Gosh, that's so cool. All right, so we have Brazilian pink salmon tarantulas over here. And I think they're amazing. So let's come over and add an education speaker. And we'll kind of keep these a little smaller, but this will be about the Brazilian pink salmon tarantula. And then we'll cover up the education speakers at some point in the future. Then let's come over and put one down here for that's Brazilian pink salmon tarantula. That's, oh my gosh, we have a lot of salmon tarantulas. <laughs> you know what? If it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Because this is Bug Village. And I think the salmon tarantulas make us a bit of money. Not that we need to worry about that in the future. We'll change all of these in the future, basically. All right, and then let's come down here and let's actually add a tiny one right over here about the new iguana. And we'll move it so that it's right here. And move it one more time. Boom. Now people will learn about the iguana. Hopefully that'll go well. And then let's add a couple of those nice spots that we found. By spots that we found, I mean this thing. Let's come and see if I can copy paste this thing. I would like you to... Let's save this whole selection as a blueprint. Wait, how much stuff was that? <laughs> Sometimes you select way... Yeah, like, I don't need the cherry blossom tree, thank you. No, no cherry blossom tree. All right, is that good? Nice little mixed selection of things. Let me save that as a blueprint. And we'll just do... Education, uh... Asian education boards. All right. It's information! Create blueprint. Okay. Uh, a double board for education in Asian areas. Create blueprint. All right. Hopefully that'll just let me like copy paste things now. Let's check. Um, I want... 
right, there we go. Wonderful. That's all I wanted. Just to be able to grab this thing kind of in mass. That's probably too many ferns, but you know what? That'll put down some cool ferns in this guy's house, <laughs> which I'm sure will be fine. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure this is fine. It actually looks kind of cool like this because now we can lift it up as high as we want. Well, then the ferns come up too, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of the ferns. That's probably the best idea. <laughs> All right, off you go, ferns. Thank you very much for your service, but it's just not needed. There we go. And we'll separate this whole puppy to himself later. And then we need one lantern right there. A little bit too close. Let's see, edit, come on in, pull the lantern out. These are important education stations, friends, so we want these where they are. Okay, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't have forever. There we go. Construction thing. It likes to pause sometimes when we do that. All right, so now we have this education station and we can start coming in. We can talk about the amphibian crisis, which is why there's more bugs, we can say. Um, and we can also talk about deforestation, which I think is good because that'll, that'll mention like, oh, it's so important. If you don't want all these bugs living in your house, then you need to make sure. There we go. Can I copy these? Save as blueprint? Oh, geez, we've got to do it all over again. Update. Oh, I can update it! Yes, I didn't know I could do that. Okay, that makes me very happy. All right, so there we have another little education station. Uh, I actually kind of really like those. There's room for improvement, but it fills in blank spaces pretty nicely. So where else do we need to educate? Definitely at least with all of our exhibits. So let's focus on just getting some education for all of our exhibits going. Especially now that I know like these education, uh, there we go, the education speakers, <laughs> we could just increase the range and make them a lot more useful than what we've been doing. And we're totally gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and just crank this puppy up to being super loud because this is all about the pandas, in case you didn't know. Then we're gonna come down. Whoop, pardon me, guest. And I'll shrink this down just a touch. Just a touch. There. All right. And let's surround these people with panda facts. They are not gonna be able to get out of here without knowing that pandas are extremely interesting mammals who have a lot of quirks that include uh, only being able to support one baby at a time. Their babies are born the most underdeveloped out of any of the Ursuline family. They diverged from other bear species about, I think it was close to 10 million years ago. That may be an exaggeration, but it was something ridiculous. Maybe it was 100,000. But they diverged from other panda species a long time ago. So that's one of the reasons that they actually... Let's put this back here. Oh! Oh, it just barely overlaps a little bit. All right, we'll shrink it down. One. There we go. Which is why they have such a specialized diet when compared with other bears who are really much more omnivorous unless we're talking about polar bears and grizzly bears which tend to be much more carnivorous and then let's come over here and make sure that people can hear oh there's no power there okay we'll have to work on getting people the ability to hear the glory of the japanese macaques in the future but we're gonna probably move them anyway so that's okay and just in case somebody wanders down here we're gonna have, oh, no power, interesting. We have some bigger problems that we'll have to tend to, friends. All right, well, let's come over to our pangolin. And they should have a couple pangolin spots. There is actually a speaker hiding in the ground right here. And we could definitely have, oh, look at this. And then people can really be learning more about the pangolin while they wait for their pancakes at the pangolin pancake shop. 
and I really want to change out a lot of these education boards, but for today, the only- it's one flip at a time, friends, and the only thing we can really focus on today- Okay, get out of my- okay, okay, bird nest, I love you, you're beautiful, you're awesome, get off me. And then let's grab- uh, you know what? Look, look, this isn't- this isn't acceptable. Just please, give me a little personal space. There we go. All right, let's see. We have so much to update, but like I said, one flip at a time. One flip at a time. We can do this, friends. All right, let's expand this. There we go. And let's see, what else could we really work on? Do these guys have... These guys do have an education speaker, but it's not very loud. And we can definitely improve that. Let's actually move one down here and we're going to make another duplicate and put it over here and make sure that it doesn't overlap. There we go. The poor flamingos don't have one about them, so let's change a couple of the panda ones to something about flamingos. Maybe, maybe just like back here somewhere. We really need to make this exhibit a little bit more reasonably sized. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do... Alright, look. This will be a flamingo one. There we go. Greater flamingo. Alright, what about over here? We have multiple little overlapping pieces, but we're missing some spots where we really could educate guests. Look, this is where the guests are congregating after all. We could educate a ton of them about the wonders of the pygmy hippo. There we go. And then are these... Are these all pick me hippo or whoops hello person i did not want to interview you just now i mean it's very nice i'm glad to know you guys are having a good time come on there we go education speaker education speaker let's change that to pick me hippo and then let's come over here let's change this one to pick me hippo and then there we go nice all right there's a little bit more room at the back. Lots of education speakers. I just think that they're going to be really essential for helping out at keeping everybody uh, well informed. Hmm. Is that going to be enough? Let's move this one down here. And then expand it. There we go. And that should give them enough education right there. All right, look at what an improvement we've already made. There's several new connections uh, for our education station. And let's actually put down the new education thing. This new blueprint, perhaps? I'm kind of curious to see if I like it in other locations as well. All right. Let's grab this. Where should we stick this? I mean, it really could go anywhere. Just to kind of vary things up a little bit. Ooh, maybe up here. So we could increase some education over here as well. What do I think about having this up here? Well, then it would stick out the bottom. So you know what? Let's just grab some normal ones for now. And we can put down a few conservation boards so people can think about the importance of what it means. Let's put a few of these down. Here we go. And then we can even put one maybe like over by the food and we'll have something about like eating responsibly. There, nice, oh geez. I can't believe that our zoo flip is almost done. We'll do bee population decline to be like, hey, if you want your smoothies, take care of the bees. Then let's do uh, climate change and then let's come over here and do uh, traditional medicine actually is a really, let's do a couple of those. Uh, well, let's do population fragmentation. There we go. Yeah, actually doing a bunch about traditional medicine and its terribly damaging effects would be really, really good. In fact, that's important enough. I kind of want to put it at one of these central spots where people show up so that they can learn a little bit more about that. Oh, wow. I think I can like tilt this slightly and people might still get the benefit. That would be really cool. Oh my gosh, I can't. Oh, the little pangolin, he looks so sad. 
<laughs> oh, me doby. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need to probably put a few more of those down. But that is all of the flipping that we have the ability to do for today, except I almost forgot and every single exhibit needs to have at least a couple spots. I almost forgot to come in. And at this poor, terribly sad, I swear we are going to change so freaking much about it exhibit for our Galapagos giant tortoises. There we go. People are going to be learning about them. All right, guys. Well, there we have it. We have now added in education everywhere. Hopefully that is going to create a very lovely before and after image. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to start working on the actual exhibits and diving back into the zoo soon. But our work is not yet done. There is still more waiting to be flipped here in the zoo. So if you guys could do please leave your suggestions and comments about what you think we should flip next. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.